Welcome to my ukulele build video. I saw a high school boy had built a guitar with a resonator and I went and asked him some questions. I decided I wanted to do the same thing. Up in my loft I have a few broken drums. Here's one of them. So I stripped off the skin of this ukulele, uh, this uh, djembe to use this really good hard African wood as part of the body. And uh, then from China, I bought this resonator cone and it came dented, so they sent me a fresh one. And I also got this uh, fretboard because I don't want to be messing around with frets. And there's the tuning knobs. So here's my uh, one to one scale diagram of the ukulele with all the measurements. I don't mess around with the ruler that much as I just use one of my other ukuleles and match it like for like. Then I make a rough copy of the original uh, plan stick it onto this old tabletop I've got and cut it out using a jigsaw. So there's the cutout and there's the ring from the old djembe. And the only tools I'm using are, is a, a hand jigsaw, a drill with a carbide bit and a sanding bit and um, a little belt sander. So here you can see I'm clamping the uh, djembe to the cutout and gluing it overnight. I started working on the biscuit bridge uh, but this one I eventually abandoned because I didn't like the look of it. Uh, so, you know, as you go, you need to change your plans. This is the uh, first shaping. You see my carbide disc and I wear hearing protection and I belt my um, drill to my little workstation so I can hold the ukulele against it. Here you can see I'm starting to put a little uh, heel on the ukulele for no other reason than it looks cool cosmetically. I think it maybe makes it a little stronger as well, I guess. Uh, before cutting the neck down to size, I draw the holes for the tuning pegs and you can see I've drawn lines on the, the neck so that I know that I don't uh, trim it down too tightly. And here is after the initial shaping, you can see that uh, things are a lot thinner and slimmer. It's starting to take shape and I've also shaped the heel. And this is what the interior looks like and you can see there are the countersunk holes where the strings are going to go on the inside of the ukulele. Here's the back of the fretboard and the top of the guitar, uh, the ukulele uh, neck and I've just used a, a crafting knife to make some uh, scratches so that the glue holds and here is the fretboard being glued to the neck overnight. I use this wooden ruler just to protect the fret wires and uh, in, uh, you know improve the overall pressure down onto it. Here's me working on the back plate of the ukulele. I just folded a piece of paper in eight, so I'd have eight evenly spaced holes. And you can see I've put a depth gauge on that screw by putting a metal tube on it, on that, uh, the drill bit, sorry, so that I can drill down almost all the way through, but not quite all the way through, so that my screws have something to grab onto. Then I screwed the back plate onto the ukulele, a body and began to grind away the excess wood so it has this nice curvy shape. So this is after a few hours of careful sanding and grinding. And as you can see this wood has a beautiful uh, figuring on it. So I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. If anybody knows what kind of wood this is, please let me know. Here you can see I've screwed the um, resonator cone to the back. This is the damaged cone that the Chinese people sent me, but they've already sent me a brand new one which is nice of them. And now that uh, that's put into place, the ukulele starts looking more and more like its end product. So lots of extra sanding with that little mini finger belt sander. In this picture here, you can see I'm working on the uh, bridge, I mean, so the nut, and it's a piece of ebony from an old uh, violin. There's another little strip of ebony over here, which I'm going to use as my biscuit bridge. And as you can see on the left side, is a block of wood with a hole through it that's going to be the bulk of the bridge and I use this special drill attachment to make big holes and then I file it down so it's got this strong triangular shape that's what it looks like there so this is the biscuit bridge if you like of my resonator cone and now after some careful sanding you can see that lovely uh, wooden figuring starting to come through and all I need to do is start applying it to the uh, ukulele uh, this is the first oiling. I use Danish oil with a dark stain and I put several coats on. This is just the first coat and you can already see the richness of that wood color. Here I'm uh, gluing the 
piece of ebony to the top of my biscuit bridge. I just put a ruler with a hammer on the top of it, 10 pound hammer, and that holds it overnight. And here with a piece of string, I'm beginning to judge my action. So make a little mark on the side of that piece of ebony and file it down until that string is the right height. So that's how I do it, nice and easy. Um, yeah, you don't want to be messing around with the ruler so much as just copying what you see on a working ukulele. Here you can see the biscuit bridge has been bolted into place. I'm just using a nut, a lug nut from drums with some uh, normal nuts at the back. And then I just pull the strings through the holes, those countersunk holes, uh, to string this ukulele and tie them onto a little piece of bent wire, which you'll see coming at the bottom over here. Um, and that will then be pulled up against the bottom and you won't see that piece of wire anymore. So in the next diagram, uh, you or in one of the, the following pictures, you'll see that uh, you won't see that piece of wire anymore. But this is what the whole thing looks like all strung up and ready to go. Um, I noticed that I had a few weird overtones, so I built a little uh, muffler for my ukulele, the back part, the back strings. Uh, just having a look online and seeing what other guys do. So it's just two pieces of wood that have been shaped and then I glued some leather onto the inside of each piece of wood and then just screwed them together really tightly close up to the bridge and they do do the job quite well. Here's a bit of a detailed view of the head of the ukulele um, with all the fixings. I also drilled a sound hole at the bottom just to let the sound out from the back of the resonator cone and this just gives it a more richer, warmer tone, I think, <laughs> having never tried it without the hole. And there's a more uh, detailed view of it and where it sits in relation to the rest of the ukulele. It's not a perfect piece. It's got rustic little pieces to it. It's not meant to be. It's meant to have a sort of African feel. And you can see that the wood is really beautiful. So if you know what kind of wood this is, please let me know. Um, and it's a really comfortable neck shape I've designed. So it's nice and uh, rounded and feels good in the hand, especially when you're holding those bar cords. And here's just a last sort of detailed view of the thing from above. So try and make one of these your own. It's really easy. Well, here is the finished product. It's had its last coating of oil. Um, so you can see there's the little dampener I've put behind the bridge. And try and get some different angles on this baby. There's the sound hole. It's the back. It's the neck detail. Of course, the all important thing is the sound. It has a slightly banjo y sound, and occasionally one of the strings shouts out a little bit, like sometimes happens to the banjo. Can you hear that? As long as I'm a bit gentle with my strumming, I'm trying to think of what's the best way of getting rid of that. So if, uh, if you have any advice, I'd love to hear it. It's one of the reasons why I put this little dampener bar over here. Um, I might use the time on method of putting a sock in the back so I can unscrew these bolts and just put a sock in the back and then screw them back on. And that might dampen the, the resonator cone a bit. But you know, you learn as you go along. I'm not too unhappy with the end result kind of pretty. It's actually exceptionally loud. So I'll do a little song for you. Um, this is Let It Rain by Eric Clapton.
has fallen through the mists of sorrow that surrounded me. The sun could never thaw away the mist that lays around me. Let it rain, let it rain, let your love rain down on me. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. My life was like a desert flower burning in the sun until I found the way to love was harder said than done. Let it rain, let it rain, let your love rain down on me. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. secret there is nothing that I lack and if I give my love to you you'll surely give it back let it rain let it rain let your love rain down on me let it rain let it rain let it rain desert flower burning in the sun it's not a bad little ukulele I like the look I'm thinking of putting some electronics in it but <sighs> that's a good temptation isn't it there's removable backing and there's some space for a jack over here and space for some sort of controller over here well i'll let you know in another video if i do indeed do that thanks for watching have a look at my other videos and uh see you soon cheers